The way I do objection handling, it's really easy. There is five to six main objections. All I do is I go, what is the objection? What's the solution? And I just use a system to solve it. Pretty easy. So what are the main objections that you would get in the field? What are charities? Um, so we had charities. One-off money. Uh, One-off. Partner. 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 Online. Online. Details. And then someone said like money, like the price. Yeah. Those are like the main six objections you'll get. Is there anything else, or because usually like anything else is just like a different way of wording one of these six. So, the big thing that I remember when it comes to objection handling, that objections are just a problem. Yeah. And then the way that we handle it is the solution. What the solution is, the solutions are the benefits of what we sell. Cool? So there's features, for example, um, Oh, there's heaps of different features you can kind of go into, but the benefits are what does that feature mean for the customer, if that makes sense. So for example, a feature would be that we um, get support uh, once a month directly for the charity. The benefit of that is it means that the proceeds go directly into the charity's pocket rather than kind of getting passed around and, and only get a bit of it. That would be a benefit if that makes sense. So when someone goes, oh I'd like to do a one-off, you go, absolutely you can, but the reason we get you to support on the 25th or the 1st or whatever the date it comes out of, the reason we get you to support on the 25th of each month is so that your money is going to go directly into the pocket of the grass breast care nurses or the Australian Care Nations campaign or whatever it is. Does that kind of make sense? That was an example. Cool. Now, just to kind of connect the dots, what would be the benefit of charities. If someone says, oh, I can't support, I've got multiple charities. Did you know they're able to? Like, they already do it, so I'm not sure another Yeah, and so what benefit do we have that would solve the problem that someone has too many charities? We have big and small ways to help out to fit in with the way the other charities people do. So. Yeah, different options, you could say that, yeah. Yeah, the one that I like to use the most is that there's no lock-ins, so you can just help for as long as you want to. Yeah. So, for example, someone might say, I've got multiple charities. So I go, that's awesome, most people do. That's why we do it this way, where there's no, there's no lock-ins. You can just help us for as long as you want to. Obviously, it's close to your heart, yeah? You wouldn't be talking to me for as long as you have been if it wasn't close to your heart. You're happy just to chip in for a little bit. That's honestly awesome. The longer you can help us, the better it is for the McGrath nurses or for the Strike Foundation or Peter Mack or whoever you have. That sounded pretty cool, didn't it? I made it up. Um, sweet, all right, what's the benefit? What solution do we have that will solve the problem of a one-off? <coughs> you could pretty much just do the no lock-ins thing again, hey? <laughs> <laughs> what was that phrase today? What did you say? Uh, like it's a smaller amount for the day rather than a big one. Yeah, like don't need something small consistently rather than a. Yeah. Yeah. You see how it's kind of working though? Like, objection handling is really easy. You're just hearing whatever their problem is and then just giving them a solution to it. Yeah. What would be the solution to the partner problem? Um, yeah, it doesn't start till next month. It doesn't start today. What I say to people, I say we're looking for supporters today, but we're not looking for support today. That's what I say. Oh, that's pretty good, eh? We're looking for supporters today, but we're not looking for support today. Cool. What about the online problem? What solution is there? <coughs> hey? Oh, I know this one. Yeah, you could say <laughs> we do it for you, make it easy. What was that? You always say we don't want the third party chewing up the donation and spitting it. Yeah, down. I say the support goes directly to McGrath Peter Max Stroke. So we're directly supporting the charity. Totally made it. <laughs> It's all right, I make everything up. I'm making this topic up. 
What what about details? Um, PCI encryption, or you can talk about um. I don't know, that, they should trust you before that. With the PCI thing, it just means that we don't hold on to the information. It's not like the encryption thing. PCI yeah. just means that we don't hold on to their card. But do we, shouldn't that just be something that's sorted out before? Like you gain the trust of the person beforehand so they don't give you the details of Yeah. <laughs> usually, yeah, and that's usually the goal. You don't want to have someone not trust you. You don't, want to take, you don't want to take someone who doesn't trust you all the way through the end of your pitch and then try and ask them for the information. Yeah. But if you do get somebody who doesn't want to give... This is a bit of a tricky one because there's multiple different things they might not trust you with their details. They might not trust giving their card out but they trust you. They might not trust you but they trust giving their card out. There's different ways of doing it. Um, it's if you want to write it down it's when you're objection handling, find the real objection. So for example, if someone says I can't afford it, like what can't they afford? Can they not afford that it's monthly? Well, they can <coughs> not afford the amount you've asked them for. So make sure that when you're objection handling, you're finding out the real objection. Someone says, oh, I don't give my information away. Find out the real objection. Do they not give their information away to strangers? Or do they not give their card away, but they're happy to give their name, number, whatever it is. Like find the real objection, so that way this is easier. Um, for me personally, when it comes to details, if it is the fact they don't give their card away, I would say that we encrypt it. Um, you could say that we don't give it away, it goes straight to the charity. So info goes straight to charity. Um, if it's they just don't trust you, I like to say I get paid to be here, this is my full time job. Like I feel like that makes you look more of a professional rather than some dude or chick that's put the house to go knock on some doors, you know what I mean? So you could say I get paid to be here. The big thing is if people don't trust you, you just look like a salesperson, but you don't look like a sales professional. And you trust a professional, you don't just trust any Tom, Dick and Harry, you know what I mean? So there's multiple different things you can do for this one, but you just gotta find the real objection when it comes to details. And then when it comes to price, what is the solution? Who's high? Hey? Who's higher? So it's Less yeah, well you could say there's different options. So for example, if you've closed them too high, you could just say that there's, there's smaller options. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. So these are the main objections that we get, yeah? We've agreed on. And I've just given you guys, and we've done it together, the solutions for all the problems. You should now, in theory, be able to handle any objection you get given at the door. Yeah. The trick to it is just knowing what the problem is and hearing what the problem is and kind of going, Chelsea's my customer and she has the problem of she can't make a decision without a partner. So what I need to do is solve Chelsea's problem. So she goes, you know what, I still can help out. Chelsea, don't worry, we're not taking any money today off you. It doesn't actually start today. We're looking for supporters, we're not looking for support from you. We're just getting a slot of interest that you would like to help out on the 25th. Yeah, we grab your information today. If you want to think about it, go right ahead. We give you the information to leave with. We just ask you, you can pop your name down today. So if you do want to help, you're not going to miss out. Pretty easy. Any questions so far? With the online one, direct to the charity. Have you ever had someone come back but also if you do it online, it doesn't go directly to the charity? Have I had someone ask if it doesn't go direct to the charity? If you do it online. What I say, and this is honest, I don't know how much of the proceeds go direct to the charity. They probably do, but I don't know that. You know what I mean? And I say, I've been asked to come by today because they're raising direct support for McGrath, for Peter Mac, for Stroke. Makes sense. So I say, look, you definitely can go online, but the reason we've been sent out and the charity's asked us to get support today is your support's going direct to them. That makes sense. Plus, I also like to say, to be honest with you, we just don't get a lot of help online. Like, for, especially I know with the case of Stroke, not many people have, have heard of the Stroke Foundation. I go, you probably didn't know about the Stroke Foundation until I really rocked up at your house today. Uh, and we find that's the case for a lot of families. We're here because unfortunately we don't get the support we need online. Yeah. If someone wants to help online, I'm not going to stop them. And I just go, hey look, we're here to raise direct support for Stroke, for Peter Mac, for McGrath, for whoever. Um, so we've been asked to come by because you want that direct support today. Um, it's really, really easy to do, which means it's really easy to not do. So the system I use is like a four-way system. The first step is to listen. Really freaking hard. Uh, <laughs> um, first step is listen. And when I say listen, you have to attentively listen. 
it tangibly listening means that the customer, the person you're speaking to, can see that you're there listening to them. Yeah, sometimes what happens is when someone's giving us an objection, we're just loading our picture <coughs> channel and we're going, uh huh, yeah, your, your partner's away, yeah, cool, sweet, bang, I hit you with an objection handle, you know what I mean? And we're not listening, you know what I mean? And the person we're talking to can see we're not listening. So the first step is to make sure that the person giving you the objection can see that you're not just there to try and turn them around to get their credit card, but you genuinely care about what the problem is and you genuinely want to help solve the problem. Yeah. Some customers don't have a problem, they just want to get out of it. But the people who genuinely have a problem and stop them from supporting need to know that you're there to actually help them out. Cool? The second step is agreed. Yeah. So whatever the problem is, you need to agree with them. Yeah. Partners away. Yeah, I agree. My mum would probably pat my dad at the back and shoot him if he made a decision without her. I don't know. I just agree. Jones three is really easy thing to do here. For example, you might do the whole yeah. All of your neighbours have the same problem. You know, and like we we always do it. Um, but just making the person uh, that you're speaking to not feel like they're the only person who has that objection or who has that problem, because sometimes that's how the customer can feel that this is the product that we're selling and this is the certain group that it's for. But they're over here, and what we're selling isn't for them. And what you need to do is bring them back into that group where they feel like that they're not. <coughs> Hey, don't worry, I was speaking to Tom and Susan down the road. They've got a couple of charities as well. I totally get what you mean. It can be pretty hard. Yeah. It's really easy to do um, if you just say their objection back to them. Really simple. So they go, oh, I just don't think I could afford to support every single month. Look, I totally agree with you. Like, I've not got the biggest bank account. I probably couldn't afford to support every month either. <coughs> Makes me sound like I'm on their side, right? Uh, the third step is called re-educate. or re-impulse. And you can choose which one you do here. Re-educate means that you solve the problem. Remember what we had before? This is the part where you solve the problem because you've now, at this stage, got them on your side. They're, you've listened to them and you've, you've kind of heard them out. So now it's only fair that it's their turn to hear you out. So when you're solving their problem, they go, oh, that actually makes sense. Oh, okay, I didn't know that that's how it works, you know what I mean? So you can re-educate them. Or what Michael Lambert um, is really good at doing is just re-impulsing them. So that whatever their problem is, the benefits just outweigh their problem. Like I, I can't do it more than once a month. These are a bit tough for my family. Yeah, I totally get ya. Um, we, we find that's quite a common thing in the area. Uh, but the reason why we get so many supporters is because the benefit of the nurses. Like if you or someone in your family was to go through breast cancer, the ability to have a nurse come and look after you guys would honestly probably be pretty life changing, wouldn't it? Yeah, you re-impulse them to the point where the problem they have is not bigger than the, the benefits of that. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, this is the part where the objection handling happens, yeah? But it's all about the setup that makes the objection effective or not effective. Cool? And then the last step, this is probably the most important one, is to re-close. And you can nail these three but then still not make the sale because you just forget to reclose it, yeah? <laughs> asking, for the, asking for the deal. Once you've got them gone, um, they've heard me, they, they agree with me. Oh, okay, I, I didn't know I could do it like this. You may need to reclose them and ask for it again. Because if you don't, you're waiting for the customer to kind of go, oh, well, I'll get back into the, the pool of I'm a supporter now. I'm happy to help out. If you don't reclose them, they're probably not going to buy. So don't forget to do this, reclose them. Sometimes I do what's called cutting them a deal, where I make it sound like I'm kind of doing a benefit for them. Uh, look, what I'll do for you, I don't want you to start on anything massive. Why don't I just pop in the smallest one for today? You can give it a go from there. What do you reckon? I'm asking them to hop back on board. Sweet. Uh, and then the cool thing is if that doesn't work, you can just try it again. <laughs> um, I'll objection handle someone maybe twice. Um, I don't want to be saying that objection handling forever because I'm just going to drain my own attitude and my own energy. And I want to make sure that if I'm objection handling someone, it's someone who genuinely has interest in what we're talking about or, or what I'm selling or, or what I'm there for. But this is the system that I use to, to handle objections. So you know the problems that they have, you now know the solutions to all the problems that they might give you. This is just how I fill in the blanks.